If you don't know, my name is Dale, Dale Bryant. Uh, I'm, I, I'm taking Richie's place just today, because uh, like I said, Richie went out of town for uh, the weekend and for a few more extra days to help out the church there in Dallas, Texas. And so um, uh, this uh, church service was actually led by the entire house church of just D.C. And so uh, me and Santana here and the stripes there, uh, we're the new house church leaders for the D.C. house church. And so it's a pleasure just to be up here with you guys. Amen. Before I begin, let's uh, go to God in prayer. Amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we, are just, we don't deserve to be here, God. Lord, I don't deserve to be here, God. I don't deserve to be talking to your, your people, Father. But Lord, I pray that you can still use me, Father, God, to deliver your message. God, I pray that you melt our hearts, God. You change our hearts today, God. We can walk away, Lord, with a fire in our bellies, God, ready to preach the word to all nations. God, I pray that we have an awesome, awesome uh, uh, weekend, God, that we can go home, Lord, feeling rested, God, feeling full spiritually, God, that can carry us on through our week, God, as we devote our lives to you, God, every day. God, thank you so much uh, for your son dying on the cross for our sins, God. That's our motivation by, we, by why we do everything we do. Thank you so much, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So a, a lot can be said by what someone wears. Hey Amen. Not me, guys, but you know. but you know, a lot can be said about what someone wears. And you know, when someone is in a suit, I mean, they they want to act a little differently in a suit. Yeah. I mean, you can't even do everything that you might want to do in like shorts and a t-shirt with a suit on. Yeah. You know, you act, you act a little differently in a suit, right? Same thing then with someone that has flip flops and some board shorts and a t-shirt on. Like they just act a little differently, right? You can you 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 act a little differently by by what you wear. With if it's at athletic wear. Right? You kind of know what that person's geared and ready to do by what they're wearing. You can see a lot by what someone wears. Girls might see another girl in a pretty dress. Oh, she's awesome. She's maybe ready to go into a, a formal or a ball. Like, that's awesome. Very pretty dress. Or maybe some shoes that she's wearing. Like, those are some high pumps, girl. Maybe you, you're not ready for a basketball game right now. <laughs> right? Or the military, right? I mean, everyone knows what military looks like. I mean, they're just, boom, they're suited up. You know that they're in the military. Bonds and connections can be made by simply what we wear. A lot of our identity is in what we wear. But I'm not here to talk about what we're wearing today. But I am here to talk about what we're spiritually wearing. What are we wearing spiritually? Spiritually, how was your week? Was your week spiritually? Well, did you look good this week spiritually? And we all know what it means to look good, right? I mean, you go into a Nordstrom's or you go into another retail store and you go into the fitting room, right? And in the fitting room, you make sure that what you're about to buy looks good on you, right? You put it on and if it doesn't look good, you're like, oh, uh-uh, nope. I'm putting that back. I'm not wearing that. I'm not out of here. I'm not going to purchase that, All right? But if it looks good, you're like, absolutely, this is exactly what I need for my style. But sometimes, you know, in, in the fashion world, right, fashionistas and, and magazine articles and, and things that talk about um, fashion, a lot of times it's just to cover up the lie. It's just to cover up what you don't want to be seen. Spiritually, are your spiritual clothes lying to you? Are they lying to you? Because when they start lying, they stop becoming clothes and they start becoming masks. And instead of wearing spiritual clothes, you're actually just wearing a spiritual mask. Yeah. And you're hiding behind your mask. You're trying to conceal yourself behind your mask. God can see straight through. There's no sense of putting on a mask when God doesn't look at what you're wearing. He looks at your heart. Guys, that's what we're talking about today. Is, it's the heart. Where's your heart spiritually? Guys, the title lesson is Clothe Yourself with Christ. Turn to Romans chapter 13. I saw some of you guys, as I mentioned clothes, you're looking at your own clothes. Like, I'm looking at my clothes. <laughs> Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And do this. Understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. 
Isn't that so true? Yeah. It's nearer now than when you first became a disciple. Oh, yes. Yes. Verse 12. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. Let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently, as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual morality and debauchery, not in dissent and dissension or jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. And do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. The first thing to clothe ourselves with Christ that we must do is we got to get rid of our old mask. Your old mask, that's your old lifestyle. That's your old sin. That's your old mask. You got to get rid of it. And when I was thinking about masks, I thought of the movie um, The Mask with Jim Carrey. I used to watch it like I don't know, all the time with my dad growing up, and I thought it was the best movie ever. Oh, yeah. And I watched it like six months ago, and I was like, I can't even finish this thing. It's so like r cr cruel and like rude, and it's like I, all the jokes are like really weird. I'm just like, I can't watch this as a disciple anymore. But I still remember the movie. And um, I, I remember as the mask, one of the first scenes is that when he first gets the mask in his hand, it's like this wooden thing, yeah. right? And if you've seen the movie, like it, it like shimmers, yeah. and it's like appealing to him, you know? He's like, oh, the mask. And the music like starts to you know tip, like beat up as it, as he gets closer. And then he gets distracted. <sighs> then he looks at it again and it shimmers. Then he looks at it again and gets his face a little closer. And he gets close enough, and before he even touches it to his face, it sticks. And it sticks to his face, and then it turns into like this malleable slime thing that starts wrapping around his face and it connects in the back and he starts transforming and you know Jim Carrey you know he's all <laughs> he's crazy right but once it's on his face the hardest thing is to get it off he has to literally reach behind his head try to grab the seams of where it try to connect around his the back of his head and rip it off and the CGI is kind of cool he rips it off and his face is like out here you know, he rips it off and like, rips his face off at the same time. But it's so hard to get off the mask once you put it back on. It, these desires that the Bible lists here, the desire to gratify the flesh, it's understandable why we have these desires. It's just not okay to give in to them. We have a great victory in God already. Don't try to put the mask back on. Keep it off. Why would you put something that, that is already sending you to hell back on your face? It's like, it's like putting a, a dirty rag back on your face after you, like, you blew snot in it. Hey, that's just disgusting. I look at your faces and you're like, I wish I could, I wish I could snapshot of your faces right now. It's all just, oh, well, yeah, why would you do that? In verse 11, it says, the hour has already come to wake up from your slumber. Stop putting these rags back on your face and leave them off. Leave them off. Turn to Galatians chapter 3. Oh Galatians chapter 3. Verse 23. Well, how do we... How do we keep this mask off, right? How do we keep it from even being appealing? How do we make sure it stays off? Well, here in chapter 3 of Galatians, verse 23, the Bible reads, Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. To clothe yourself with Christ means to get baptized. It does not say clothe yourself with a prayer. It does not say clothe yourself by kissing a ring. It does not say clothe yourself by bowing down. No, it says clothe yourself through baptism. Well, how in the world does baptism clean us? How does it clothe us? 
Turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And we're picking up here where Peter is preaching at the day of Pentecost. He's preaching the day of Pentecost, and he has so many people there. His message that he preaches is the very first gospel message, and then we see the very first response. Verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, well, Brothers, what, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. The message of salvation, guys, is you get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. There is no other message. You don't say a prayer to get your, the forgiveness of your sins. You, say, you repent of your sins, and you get baptized for the, for the forgiveness of your sins. That's the gospel message. That's the response to the message. If you're here in this room and you have yet to respond to the gospel message this way, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You know what clothes you're wearing. Take them off and clothe yourself with Christ. It's sad, but some of our friends and some of our family are wearing masks. Much of this city is wearing a mask. Yeah. This city, this nation, the world are wearing masks. They're trying to cover up the sin, the deceitfulness in their hearts, but God sees straight through it. What we need to do, guys, what we must do, is we have to give them an option to find God. To clothe themselves with Christ. Some simply don't know how to get there. And they're following the wrong teaching. They're following the wrong people. They're following the wrong God. International Sunday. That's how we're going to do it. That's one way. Guys, we're, we're going to the Lincoln Memorial. I mean, that, that's amazing. We're going to be preaching at the Lincoln Memorial. And here's the thing. I, I, I mean, it's expected that if you're a member of the church, you're just going to be there. But here's what I want to challenge you guys with. Don't show up by yourself. Don't show up by yourself. Bring someone with you. Yeah, sure, you, you can reclothe yourself and keep clothing yourself with Christ, but that message is going to be for those that need to take off their mask. Don't be by yourself. If you feel like yours is still on, the hour has already come. The hour has already come. It, 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 take it off. Don't leave here without talking to someone, well, how, how do I get my mask off? How do I force this thing back off my head? Because it's choking me. I can't see with it on. Guys, let's bring so many people to International Sunday, June 26th. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. When I was thinking about masks and I was thinking about, um, you know, clothing yourself, um, I thought of the master of disguise. <laughs> and the one I think about in the Bible is Satan himself, the master of disguise. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, the Bible reads, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He masquerades as an angel of light. I, 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 we're going to look more into in Satan and into his, his fall and you know, why he tries to masquerade around, but it was because of his pride. Guys, the second point is that we have to have humility. We must clothe ourselves with humility. Turn to Isaiah chapter 14. Satan, he didn't always go by the name of Satan. He didn't always have that, that name. In fact, he was once with God. In Isaiah chapter 14 here, 
the, in the word Satan, it, it means adversary or accuser. But like I said, he didn't always have that. Isaiah, as you pick up here in, in chapter 14, he prophesied during the, 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 uh, the reign when the kingdom, uh, God's people were divided. We had Israel and then we had Judah. And he preached mainly to Judah about the fact that they were away from God. They had left God. They had abandoned God. King Solomon, his son Rehoboam, made a bonehead decision. He didn't seek advice. And because of that, 10 out of 12 tribes in the kingdom of God refused to submit to him. Wow. Just because he didn't seek advice. Well, actually, he did seek advice. He just took the wrong advice. In chapter 14, verse 9, we see here Isaiah comparing this king of Babylon as he foresees God's people going into Babylonian captivity, and he compares this king to Satan himself. Verse 9, the realm of the dead below is all astir. To meet you at your coming, it rouses the spirits of the departed to greet you, all those who are leaders in the world. It makes them rise from their thrones, all those who are kings of the nations. They will all respond. They will say to you, you also have become weak as we are. You have become like us. All your pomp has been brought down to the grave. Along with the noise of your harps, maggots are spread out beneath you and worms cover you. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the pits, to the depths of the pit. Those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate. And this, the man who shook the earth and made the kingdoms tremble. In the King James Version, in verse 12, it says, You have fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Satan's other name was Lucifer. Lucifer, it means morning or day star. Wow. It's a beautiful name to describe someone full of light, beauty, and perfection. It was a beautiful, beautiful name. But Satan's mask was pride. He wanted to be better than God, to raise his throne above God's. He thought he knew best. Is that some of your hearts? Come on, bro. Think you know best? God actively opposed Satan. In Luke 10, Jesus describes Satan's fall like, the, like lightning. Lightning from striking the ground. Lightning, lightning it, it, it can travel as long as, as far as five miles, and it's 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what God did to Satan and his pride. He said, get out of here. And that's when he got a new name. Turn to Ezekiel, chapter 28. Satan's pride is eventually going to kill him. Ezekiel 28. Verse 11, Ezekiel here, he makes another comparison now between, between the king of Tyre and Satan. In verse 11, The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, take up a, a lament concerning the king of Tyre, and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect and beauty. You were in the Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you, carnelian, Chrysolite, the emerald, topaz, onyx, and jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise, and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as guardian cherub. For so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God and walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. 
Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mounts of God, and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on the account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. Lucifer had the name of seal of perfection. This is, how, this is how God describes Lucifer. Seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. All right? I mean, I think if some of the brothers said that to some of the sisters, they'd be super encouraged. Sis, you have the seal of perfection. Sis, you are full of wisdom. Sis, you're, you're perfect in beauty. Guard your heart. And God called Satan, or Lucifer, the guardian cherub. Well, what's that? Well, it, it's an angel. And there are three main different types of angels. There's the archangels. You have uh, like Michael and Gabriel. They're archangels. Michael more of the warrior. Expecting a little more than that. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Michael, Michael more the warrior. Amen. Because we got two mics in the room. And then uh, Gabriel more the messenger. And then you have the seraph angels. And these are translated as the fiery ones. These are the fired up disciples. <laughs> Amen. And they're the fiery ones. I mean, if I saw like a fired up being, I'd probably be pretty scared. But these are the fiery angels, the fiery ones. And then you had the cherubim angels. And their mission was to guard sacred things like the ark. Ark of the covenant. So if Lucifer was given this name or given this role of guardian cherub, that means he was a guardian of something. What was he guarding? Look back in verse 13. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Satan's purpose was to guard the garden of God. That's why he was there to tempt Adam and Eve. He was the morning star, beautiful, full of wisdom, but his pride caused him to fall. How's your pride? How's your pride? That's kind of a hard question to ask, uh, to, to answer though, right? Like, I don't, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how's my pride. I have a story here for you. The story is told of two ducks and a frog who lived happily together in a farm pond. The best of friends. The three would amuse themselves and play together in their water hole. When the hot summer days came, amen, they're coming for us too. However, the pond began to dry up, and soon it was evident that they would have to move. This was no problem for the ducks, who could easily fly to another pond. But the frog was stuck. So it was decided that they would put a stick in the bill of each duck that the frog could hang onto with his mouth, mouth as they flew to another pond. The plan worked well, so well, in fact, that as they were flying along, a farmer looked up in admiration and said, well, isn't that a clever idea? I wonder who thought of that. The frog said, I did, and fell. Pride is the only disease, thank you, Santana, is the only disease that makes everyone sick but the one who has it. I'll say it again. Pride is the only disease that makes everyone sick but the one who has it. Well, how do you know if you're prideful? I'll help you out. Do you look down on those who are less educated, less affluent, less refined, or less successful than yourself? Do you look down on those people? There could be some pride in your heart. Are you judgmental towards those who didn't make the same lifestyle choices as you? Maybe the way that your dress standards, how you school your kids, your entertainment standards, and you look down on them and judgmental. There might be some pride in your heart. Are you quick to find fault with others and to verbalize those thoughts to others? You just quickly point out, oh, look at that, look at that over there. He's messing up. Mm -mm. Do you freq frequently correct or criticize people, especially in positions of leadership? Teachers, 
boss, husband, wife, church leader. Could be some pride. Are you proud of the schedule you keep? How disciplined you are? How much you are to accomplish that that pride then causes you to look down on others that aren't as disciplined? Are you argumentative? I just like to argue. Do you believe that your way is the right way, the only way or the best way? Could be pride. Are you guilty of pretense? Pretense, it's an attempt to make something that is not the case appear true. Meaning you're offering up a better impression of yourself than what is actually true. Right here in church, would someone find this Monday morning? How you look right now? That's pride if you're hiding yourself. Do you resent being even asked to serve? You just hope that, I hope they don't, don't ask me. You're quick, are you quick to become defensive when you are criti criticized or corrected? No, bro, no, I, I didn't do that. I didn't say that. I know this is D time, but bro, you can't tell them what to do. Are you a perfectionist? And then get irked or impatient with people who aren't. You like things done a certain way, and so when someone else doesn't do that, you get mad at them. Do you frequently interrupt people when they are speaking? That's usually followed by this face. If you're seeing this face a lot, it means you're interrupting people. Hey, bro. Okay. Do you see that a lot? Do you often complain about the weather, your health, your circumstances, your, your church, your job? Do you complain? There's pride in your heart. Do you often get told that you talk about yourself too much? In your discipling times, and you're, you told the truth. Bro, you talk about yourself too much. How often does that talk happen? That someone tells you that you talk about yourself too much. There's pride in your heart. Repent. Do you neglect or express gratitude? Sorry, neglect to express gratitude for the little things. You're not grateful for the little things. You don't, you're not grateful to God. You're not grateful for others. You're just ungrateful. You're prideful if you're ungrateful. This is a good one. When's the last time you said, I was wrong, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? If you think it's been more than a month, there could be some pride in your heart. There could be some pride in your heart. If you're thinking about all these questions, apply to someone else, not you. I can totally see your faces. Some of you guys are looking around like, that's totally this guy right here. Prideful. Preach it, bro. The ones that are laughing the hardest are the ones that did it first. <laughs> Guys, the, the challenge is humble yourself or God will humble you. Just like Satan, you do not want to be humbled by God. Clothe yourself with humility. He who exalts himself will be humbled. That's scripture, guys. That's God saying he will humble you. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Turn to Luke chapter 10. Yes, still with me? Luke chapter 10. Verse 14. I'm sorry, 27. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. 
Clothing yourself with Christ means loving God and loving people. Loving God and loving people. See, when you love something, you cherish it. Like, you want to hold on to it. Something that I hold on to, it's, it's something that my father gave me. I, uh, I forgot it today, but um, I do hold on to it, I promise. <laughs> it's at my house. I just forgot it. I was mad at myself, too, when I forgot. I was like, oh, man. But my dad, um, when I graduated from, from high school, uh, I played baseball. Some of you guys know I love baseball. And uh, um, I played on varsity, um, but a lot of during my senior year, I couldn't play. I had injured my arm. So I couldn't play. I couldn't throw. It was a horrible injury. Um, yeah, it, was, yeah, it was horrible. So I couldn't play uh, a lot of that year. And my birthday is at the end of the year. My birthday just passed in, uh, in May. And so for my birthday, at the, you know, as I graduated high school, my dad did something really cool for me. He went down to the, the field where I played baseball at, and I was a third baseman. And he went down to the, to the field, and he grabbed some dirt from the, the third baseline. And he put it in a small little glass container with a screw on top, and just threw some dirt in there. And then he stole my glove somehow, and he snipped off one of the little leather thongs of the glove and put that in the little glass container. And then he put a label on the outside that said, third baseline, across my high school. Aww. High school I went to. Awesome. On the bottom, happy birthday, son. Aww. Screwed it on tight, glued it, so I can't even open. Nice. And he gave it to me. Aww, awesome. And I cherish that thing. It just brings back so many memories. Wow. High school, baseball, like this is the third baseline. That's the dirt where I see the ground balls. I think, like that was, that's awesome, and I cherish that. When you love something, you cherish it. Do you love the kingdom? Do you cherish the kingdom? When you cherish something, you sacrifice for it. I have another story here for you. It is said that Cyrus, the founder of the, uh, of the Persian Empire, once he had captured a prince and his family. When they came before him, the monarch asked the prisoner, what will you give me if I release you? The half of my wealth, was his reply. And if I release your children? Oh, everything I, I, I propose. And if I release your, your wife, your majesty, I will give myself, said Cyrus. Or said the, the, the guy in the prison. Cyrus was so moved by his devotion that he freed them all. And they returned home, and the prince said to his wife, Wasn't Cyrus a handsome man? With a look of deep, deep love for her husband, she said to him, I, I didn't notice. I could only keep my eyes on you, the one who was willing to give himself up for me. Sacrifice, it goes a long way. When someone clothes themselves with loving sacrifice, it goes a long way. Jesus did that for you. Come on, bro. That's why we're here. When I think of love for God and love for people, I think of Mike Cisse. I think, yeah, we think, Mike. I think, I think of Mike Cisse. Mike loves God. It's apparent because when I think I'm waking up early, this guy is coming in from work. He works overnight. I wake up early, I read my Bible, I have my, my time of prayer with God, my quiet time. And this guy is doing it before me, and he worked all night. And I'm like, bro, like I'm, I'm walking around my apartment complex. We're, we're roommates. So I walk in my apartment complex thinking, like, 6 a.m., like, this is early, nice. And I see Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike loves God. When I think of loving God, I think of loving people, I think of also Lou Vivas. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, it was cool. About three weeks ago, Lou invited me over to his home just to hang out. Just to, just to hang out. He lives in Columbia Heights. And I live in College Park. So, you know, it was a little trip. And, uh, but he invited me over to hang out. And something came up. I, I had to cancel on him. But really bad. And so uh, he, he followed up with me the next week. <laughs> he said, bro, can we hang out this week? I was like, bro, absolutely. You, you, uh, totally. I totally want to hang out with you. And then, then that week was the week I was helping Trey get baptized, and so we had a, you know, a study late at night, and I couldn't come over. So I, bro, I'm so, super sorry, bro, but can we reschedule again? And that rescheduled time came this past Wednesday. And uh, Lou, you know, he had me over to his house, 
And when I got there, his, uh, his daughter was there, his uh, grandfather was there, and um, he said, hey, bro, I'm super sorry. Um, it's going to have to be a little short tonight because I didn't expect my, my daughter to be here tonight. Um, but, bro, we have a, you know, about 35, 40 minutes. Let's go share our faith. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like halfway convicted, like, oh, snap, I thought we were just going to chill on the couch or something, you know, <laughs> watch a movie. <laughs> but he wanted to go share his faith. Well, I, mean, I was convicted. I was like, bro, okay, amen, bro, let's, let's do it. And we went out and we shared our faith. He took me no, no really further than like the block of his house. We just shared our faith. Everyone we ran into. You know, we'd get into a conversation and then we would just stop. Hey, man, hold on. We're having a Bible talk over here on Friday, man. You want to come? And it was awesome. And Lou has other responsibilities. The reason why he had to get back in just 30, 45 minutes because he had to put his daughter to bed. Come on. He loves God. And he loves people. Again, I ask, do you love the kingdom? Do you cherish the kingdom? Because, guys, we have a great opportunity to show our love for God's kingdom at the Global Leadership Conference. The Global Leadership Conference, guys, is absolutely heaven on earth. If you haven't been, that's why you don't understand what I just said. <laughs> it's heaven on earth. It's God's kingdom right here on earth. Guys, the GOC, that's what we have to treasure. Other disciples, the love of, of, of God's people. We need to cherish that. We need to give up everything for the kingdom. Spiritually clothing yourself with Christ means getting rid of the mask. Not hiding behind your own self, hiding behind your sin, but getting rid of the mask and throwing it away. It means putting on humility. Humbling yourself before God, not being prideful. And clothing yourself with Christ means loving God and loving his people. I thank you guys so much. To God be the glory. Awesome. At this time, we'll have those that are getting baptized I, that I don't see. Um, cool. We'll give us just a second. So, um... El Church House Leader. Give it up, Susan Tan. Um, good afternoon, guys. I want to introduce you, Elton Cefello. Um, Elton um, drove all the way from Virginia Beach. She went to high school with Nikki, um, and they were um, high school best friends. And so literally, she came here Monday night, and ever since Monday, uh, Monday night we did a Bible study late into the, to the night. Tuesday we did two Bible studies, Wednesday two Bible studies. Every single day we've been two, doing two Bible studies. We've been giving her lots of challenges. And um, Elton, I want to um, read the scripture to you. I think it uh, really describes your heart of what you've been through and what God is going to do for you. It's in Psalm 107, and it's in verse 4. It says, Some wander in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hunger with good things. And I just really think that your life in Virginia Beach was ebbing away. And you longed to have a relationship, a true relationship with God, and he led you to College Park. This, the, the wonderful, um, a, a place where you can become a true disciple, where you were able to learn um, God's truth. And today you're gonna be my sister in Christ and I'm so excited for you. year of high school so seven years ago and um, I never thought in a thousand years that this is what God was leading me to do when when he asked me to move to DC with Richie and Elizabeth and it's just so amazing because actually one year ago today was the day that we set foot in DC Come on. and I never would have thought that a year later I'd be baptizing my best friend 
Awesome. Elton, I love you so much, and we've been through so much together. <laughs> and I'm so excited that, that you're going to start your new life today. <laughs> and I'm going to be there for you all the time. <laughs> and this is just something new that we get to start again together. <sighs> I love you so much. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Three weeks ago, I didn't think I'd be standing here on this stage. A week and a half ago, I didn't think I'd be standing here. here. I didn't, my whole life I've been, I've never had a family. I've, I've been, I never had a relationship with God. I never had any of that. And I always looked for it and I, ever, I always longed for it, but I didn't know how. And I, I went to a church, but we didn't follow the word. We didn't, I didn't learn anything. And come in here one week ago, when Destiny and Nikki drove all the way down to Williamsburg, Virginia to pick me up to meet me there and bring me back up here. I had no idea what was going to happen, but I knew it was going to be for the good. Come on. And I knew when I got up here and the minute I walked in the front doors of, the, of, of Safe Haven and saw, those, and saw those girls and the hugs and the happiness and the fellowship time, that I knew I had found where I was supposed to be and that everything I had been through was supposed to lead me to this point right now. And I know that today will be the first day of the rest of my life. <laughs> the most important questions come on come on a little closer um do you believe that jesus is the son of god that he lived a sinless life was crucified for your sins and was resurrected on the third day what is your good confession jesus is lord come on. <laughs> um, because of your good confession we can now baptize you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit all your sins will be forgiven you will receive the gift of the holy spirit and your name will be written in the book of life come on